steady now. The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, is one of the notable exceptions to the rule that movie tie-in games are lacklustre. It would prove a breakout hit for Starbreeze, despite financial difficulties almost leading to its cancellation. One of the Xbox's finest technical showcases, this first-person adventure would successfully meld disparate mechanical elements to create a unique whole. A prison break setting ties things together, suiting the character perfectly and a faithfully written narrative added to the lore of the anti-hero. All this resulted in a superb game which stands amongst stiff competition on the Xbox. Escape from Butcher Bay is an impressive melding of technical prowess, mechanically sound gameplay, and a story that's bolstered by its Hollywood source, rather than hindered by it. Dash 2. Remember the number. Remember the rules. My rules. Listen, there's no outside at Butcher's, just a whole planet of desert. So check those desires right now, because you will not get out. As the title suggests, Escape from Butcher Bay sees Richard B. Riddick confined to the titular prison after bounty hunter Johns hands him in. Ran by Warden Hoxie and hounded by a corrupt prison guard Abbott, Riddick begins to use his resourcefulness to find a way to escape. Serving as a prequel to the first two Riddick films, this narrative is incredibly strong, bolstered by a slew of performances from notable actors. Diesel, reprising his role, does a tremendous job capturing the gruff, straightforward tone of the hero, with some awesome one-liners thrown in for good measure. You can clearly see the influences of films such as Escape from Alcatraz, but these touches only elevate the narrative when it swerves in differing directions. Some little side plots, such as how Riddick acquired his special vision, prove enticing for fans of the source, but it's easily navigable for those who have never watched the films. Held aloft by three styles of gameplay, Butcher Bay never grows tiring. As you navigate around the prison and several different zones, you'll need to sneak, punch, and shoot your way around when needed. Melee combat is remarkably fun for the time, echoing the weight and ugliness of a scrap, with different moves mapped to the left stick, and a sturdy block which protects against fists, though not weapons, you'll find yourself trying out combos and it flows really well. Shooting is similar, with robust physics which feel heavy and realistic, rather than speed shooters like Quake. Laser aiming makes pulling off headshots a breeze, but Dogged AI utilises cover to create a real challenge. Lastly, Stealth makes use of Riddick's love of the dark. Deep, thick lighting allows you to hide in the shadows, as well as disable sources of light to create a wider radius of cover. While some quirks such as inconsistent AI can ruin clean runs, it never feels too punishing when you're caught. A mix of three separate styles which, at the time, were rarely combined to this effect, Butcher Bay's mechanics keep it compelling to the end. Going to a triple max slam, Butcher Bay. Toughest in the system, so they said. Impossible to escape. But then they'd never met me. The prison itself is a key component, proving extremely well realised, like a cross between a gritty prison crime drama and the sci-fi films of the late 70s. The grime-caked walls, rough inmates with filthy clothes, and a plethora of security systems lend the place a claustrophobic feel. But when you can, exploring can prove fruitful. A handful of side quests pop up throughout each part of the game, ranging from collecting a pair of mislaid glasses, 
to fighting multiple opponents in the arena. Smokes, both strewn around the environment and held by entrepreneur inmates who accept cash or drug moths as payment, unlock a slew of featurettes revolving around both the game and the film it's based on. Inmates have unique names, identities and personalities, with interactions revealing their thoughts on your actions as you play. They can often give you an advantage too, selling melee weapons or tools such as vent pipes which unlock more routes through the prison. This means, while sitting at around 10 hours to complete, there is great incentive to return. Starbreeze's engine was seriously impressive for its time, creating one of the Xbox's best looking games. The real mapping technique, used in games like Doom 3, results in impressive texturing and smooth edges which brings the dank prison to life. The lighting is even better, adding thick layers of darkness around corners which prove a key part of stealth and heighten the atmosphere of Butcher Bay. Characters look great, with a nice recreation of Vin Diesel which you sometimes catch a glimpse of in cutscenes and occasional third person moments. Despite how much it pushes the console, performance runs well, though the trade off seems to be a bit of fuzziness when looking at distant objects. The sound excels too, with great voice work from the star studded cast, a script which, thanks to tutelage from Diesel and writer David Twoey, feels faithful to the films and hard hitting sound effects, ranging from the brutal strikes of combat to the potently loud gunfire. <laughs> I thought you were the big dog, Russ. Maybe he's more your size. Yes, sir, Mr. Abbott. <laughs> You are messing with the natural order of things, Riddick. And when that happens, well, as you can see, people can get hurt. Or worse. Indeed. That's not to say everything works out flawlessly, as some issues can dog the game occasionally. Stealth usually works great, but there's a nasty tendency for enemies to spot you despite facing the other way sometimes particularly giant mech suits, which are a major pain to fight. This can cause problems, as you'll spend most of the game unarmed. A couple of sequences involving boss fights can also prove tedious, particularly a melee scrap with Abbott, which is insanely difficult. The flowing nature of the prison is also effective, leading to a more continuous experience rather than a level by level case, but this can lead to frequent stops as the game has to load a new area, which takes you out the experience. This is a shame, as a minimalistic HUD, which places ammo counters on guns and rarely pops up with health blocks, goes a long way to immersing you into this world. But these feel like minor qualms in the grand scheme of things, and Escape from Butcher Bay is simply a huge cut above most licensed fare. A hugely successful blend of melee, stealth and shooting means the gameplay is enjoyable until the end, and when mixed with the carefully crafted, expanding environment of Butcher Bay, players will easily lose themselves in Riddick's story. When you also factor in stunning graphics, Hollywood quality sound and side content which encourages repeat visits, it comes together immensely well. It goes to show how high the bar was set here, as Butcher Bay remains one of the best movie tie-ins ever released, some 16 years after its initial launch. It ain't the fall that gets you. It's a sudden stop at the bottom. <laughs>